Improving AI-generated stories to make them GCSE ready. Question five, new beginning story. Here is the question. A magazine has asked for contributions for their creative writing section. We're not going to do the description, but we're going to focus here on the story. Write a story about a new beginning. Lesson objectives. Generate a story new beginning on AI software. Improve it to include start with a busy, active scene and a narrative hook. It's good to add dialogue here. Flashback to the past. Add a semicolon between related sentences to give compound sentences. Vary sentence types. Add or change to some simple, complex and one minor sentence. Zoom out to describe a wider scene. Zoom in to describe a narrow scene. Make it a circular structure and add simile, metaphor and foreshadowing. Here is a story generated on ChatGPT. What do you think? My search term was a five paragraph story called New Beginning in which an earthquake destroys a town. The small town of Pine Valley had always been a tranquil haven nestled between rolling hills and lush forests. Its residents cherished the sense of community that thrived in their picturesque surroundings. Life moved at a gentle pace with the town's main street lined with family owned shops and cosy cafes. However, the peace was abruptly shattered one fateful morning when the ground beneath Pine Valley began to tremble violently. The earthquake struck with a ferocity that the town had never experienced before. Buildings swayed precariously before collapsing into heaps of rubble. Streets cracked open, swallowing cars and anything in their path. Panicked residents fled their homes, seeking safety in open spaces. The once familiar and comforting landscape of Pine Valley was transformed into a scene of chaos and destruction in a matter of minutes. Amid the cacophony of collapsing structures and terrified screams, a sense of disbelief hung heavily in the air. In the aftermath, the townspeople gathered what remained of the town square, their faces etched with shock and despair. The elderly Mrs. Thompson, who had lived in Pine Valley her entire life, clung to her granddaughter, tears streaming down her face. Mayor Bradley, determined to maintain some semblance of order, addressed the crowd. We have lost so much, but we have still have each other. Together we will rebuild, he proclaimed, his voice steady despite the turmoil within. Days turned into weeks as the residents of Pine Valley began the arduous process of recovery. Volunteers from neighbouring towns arrived to lend a hand, bringing supplies and offering comfort. Amid the ruins, there were moments of hope and resilience. Children, resilient and adaptable, found ways to play amidst the debris. Their laughter, a poignant reminder of the indomitable spirit of the town. Neighbours, once merely acquaintances, became like family as they worked side by side to clear the rubble and salvage what they could. Slowly but surely, Pine Valley began to rise from the ashes. New buildings were constructed, designed to withstand future tremors. The town's layout was reimagined to foster a stronger sense of community and resilience. Gardens were replanted and the sound of hammers and saws became the new rhythm of life. Through collective effort and unwavering determination, Pine Valley not only rebuilt, but redefined itself. The earthquake had taken much, but it had also given the town a new beginning, one rooted in unity and hope for the future. What did you think? It wasn't too bad, but it was in chronological order. And to a certain extent, it was a bit of a boring story, especially as all the sentences were complex ones. So how can we improve it? These are the changes I suggest. Start with a busy active scene and a narrative hook. It's good to add dialogue here to show that you can. Flashback to the past next. Add a semicolon between related sentences somewhere in your writing to give compound sentences. Maybe do that more than once. Vary sentence types. Add or change to some simple, complex and one minor sentence. These are mostly or all complex and it's a bit dull. Zoom out. Describe the wider scene, for example, the whole village. Zoom in and describe a narrow scene, for example, a photo. Give it a circular structure, so end up where you started and don't forget language techniques as well as all the other structural techniques. So, for example, add simile, metaphor and foreshadowing. 
Here is the improved story, which includes a lot of the features which your examiner is looking for, some of which occurred in the originally generated story, but many of which did not. New beginning. Don't forget the bread, yelled Lisa from across the bustling market square, her voice barely audible over the lively chatter and clatter of Pine Valley's Saturday market, which was unusual. Vendors called out their specials, children darted between stalls and the scent of fresh produce mingled with the aroma of baked goods. Suddenly, a deep rumble shook the ground. Panic erupted as the earth heaved violently like a giant awakening from a long slumber. Get down, someone screamed. The warning was lost in the cacophony. Market stalls toppled, sending fruits and vegetables rolling across the cracked pavement. People stumbled and fell, their faces masks of terror. In the midst of the chaos, a young boy clung to his mother, eyes wide with fear. Buildings that had stood for generations crumbled in seconds, their facades collapsing into heaps of dust and debris. The town buckled under the weight of an unseen force. Devastating. Years ago, Pine Valley had been known for its serene annual festivals. Every summer, families gathered in the same market square for the Pine Valley Fair. Children laughed as they rode the carousel and couples danced under strings of fairy lights. The fair was the highlight of the year, a time when the community's bonds were strengthened. Joy filled every corner of the town. This memory now seemed like a dream, distant and surreal, a fragile echo of what once was. As you can see, this story is a bit different and a lot more active. It starts with dialogue and it's a very busy scene and there is some foreshadowing and a narrative hook. Um, the fact that the lady's voice is barely audible is unusual, so that's a bit strange. And then the action breaks out, the earthquake, the rumble shook the ground and there is a simile like a giant awaking from a long slumber. The action continues and there's more dialogue. This is good to show your examiner that you can do this and punctuate dialogue. There's a metaphor, their faces, masks of terror and a minor sentence, devastating. After the action comes a flashback to years ago um, when there were happy scenes in the village. There are a couple of semicolons in that paragraph between sentences which are related in meaning and a simile is highlighted like a dream. Here's the rest of the story. The extent of the devastation became evident. Entire blocks lay in ruins. The once picturesque streets were now a maze of rubble and dust. The town's iconic clock tower, which had faithfully told the hours for over a century, was now a pile of broken stones. The landscape was unrecognisable, a stark contrast to the vibrant community that had thrived here mere moments before. It was as if the heart of Pine Valley had been ripped out, leaving behind a ghostly shell. Amidst the widespread destruction, a touching scene caught the eye. A small intact photo frame lay atop a pile of bricks, miraculously undamaged. Inside was a picture of a family smiling and happy, a poignant reminder of what Pine Valley had once been. This small token of the past stood out st starkly against the backdrop of ruin, symbolising both loss and hope. The image foreshadowed the resilience that would soon emerge from the community's heartache. Slowly but surely, Pine Valley began to rise from the ruins. New buildings were constructed, designed to withstand future tremors. The town's layout was reimagined to foster a stronger sense of community and resilience. Gardens were replanted. The sound of hammers and saws be became the new rhythm of life. Through collective effort and unwavering determination, Pine Valley not only rebuilt, but redefined itself. Months later, as spring flowers bloomed anew, Lisa stood in the bustling market square once again. Vendors called out their specials, children darted between the stalls and the scent of fresh, fresh produce mingled with the aroma of baked goods. Don't forget the bread, she called out with a smile. The market was alive, a testament to the town's new beginning, stronger and more united than ever before. As you can see, the um, techniques in uh, the second half of the story include zooming out, so talking about how the whole area looks, and then zooming in to a photo of a family whose house has been ruined in the earthquake. Language techniques include alliteration and 
simple sentences which contribute to the list of things that were done after the earthquake. There's a circular structure and it shows that uh, Lisa has returned to the market towards the end, which has been rebuilt. So here are the lesson objectives again. Don't forget that in the writing question, as Mr. Salis told us in his video, it is statistically shown that students get better marks if they do the story rather than the description because they can um, show off their structural skills, which is what we've been looking at today. Um, so it is advised that you actually try the story and use the structural features that you've learned on your GCSE course. Stop the video if you'd like to revise the different lesson objectives. Thank you.